What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another great video. Welcome back to a beautiful morning out here in Arizona. It's actually a pretty cold morning right now. It's sitting at about 39 degrees, which for Arizona is pretty much like a blizzard. Today is actually a big day. I'm pretty excited. We're actually going to be installing that new ethanol content sensor right here in the Eco Beast. Got to go run the AutoZone first to go ahead and pick up one little piece of hose that we're going to need for the installation that you'll see later. Let's get going. What better way to start off a cold day than with a cold start? So as y'all saw in the last video, we already figured out what ratio of fuel to E85 we actually needed to put into this truck to match that E30 tune. I keep the little kit in here with me in case we need to redo it again, but we already have it loaded up on the SCT X4 tuner. Um, so for today, that ethanol content sensor, like I said, we're going to be installing that, which is going to go right here. It's going to be a whole new gauge pod. It actually retains the factory speaker mount right there. And the gauge pod will be up here just a little bit closer. So I'm excited. It's been a while since I've actually done a modification on this truck. So yeah, it's about time. So I real quick went and picked up two different diameters of fuel hoses here. One's a 5 16th and one's a 3 8 For the ethanol content sensor, we have to obviously tap into the fuel system of the truck or the fuel line of the truck. And I didn't want to make any cuts into the existing fuel system. So I'm actually going to create a little adapter here, which will connect to the content sensor as well as to these hoses, which are then made up to the OEM fuel lines in the truck. All right, guys, so we made it back home and we're getting ready to go ahead and get this gauge installed. First things first, we actually have to take off the factory A pillar here because we have to get access to that little OEM speaker down here because we're going to keep that guy. So there should be two screws on the back side once we pull this off and we'll be able to take that guy off put it onto the new gauge pod and come back with our new gauge and speaker installed on that new A pillar. To simply take off this A pillar here guys, you're gonna actually gonna wanna start down here. You're gonna reach your hand into this little hole and give it a little tug. Then that little panel comes off extremely easy. This should pop out. Be careful not to pull too hard because this is connected with the wire and we'll get access to the back of that speaker. So what I actually had to do was pull up towards the top of the truck a little bit and then it was able to release from this groove right up here hopefully you guys can see that but before you actually pull it all the way out like i said that speaker is connected with a wire down here that connector is easily accessible right here so you'll simply unplug it and now we can pull it out so now that we finished up taking this off i made my way inside and now you can see the difference between the factory a pillar and the aftermarket one i just purchased um, it has a little slot right here for the gauge and here is where we're actually going to switch over the factory speaker with those two screws and then on this side you'll simply screw it right back in right there so i'll do this real quick and we'll move on to the next part and there we go, we now have the speaker over onto the aftermarket gauge pod. It was real simple, lines up pretty well. So we're gonna jump over here, talk about the Innovative Motorsports ethanol content sensor that I got for Christmas. Just kind of real quick run through what comes in the box, as well as some of the other stuff that I purchased, just so I can make sure that this install goes as seamless as possible. So what we have in the box here is the main thing right here, the gauge itself. Um, this guy actually comes with multiple faces and bezels that you can choose from. This one here is a silver bezel and you can use a white face there. But I'm just going to leave it with the black bezel and the black face because it will blend in with what my truck looks like on the interior. You have the actual harness or the cable itself which will connect the gauge to the sensor. It also comes with a 4 pin programming cable. Because Innovative Motorsports does a lot more than just gauges. It does data loggers, software, meters, and all this stuff is all editable with some software you can download. So that's what that's for, but I'm not going to have to worry about that in this case because I'm just going to use the stock parameters. So that brings us down here to the sensor itself. Here it is, pretty much just a little sensor. Um, you can leave these on here because you don't want to get any dirt or debris inside here because this is what's going to actually mount up to your fuel system. You're going to have to splice this in, which brings us to what I had to purchase myself just to make sure that we're going to be able to do this without any problems. So for the stuff that I purchased extra, starting with the hoses here, I got two different inner diameter hoses. One's a 3 8 and one's a 5 16 um, Over here I have some quick connects. I have both a straight coupler as well as a 90 degree elbow coupler. It goes from a quick connect 3 8 
to a 5 16 inner diameter hose here and I didn't know once again which type to get so I just got both because they're cheap last but not least over here I got a bunch of mini fuel injector line style hose clamps these guys are extremely great for this type of install reasons being is because unlike the worm gear clamps they can provide actually a smoother more even force around the entire hose itself and it's a whole bunch of shorted sizes so I can make sure I can use the correct one and don't have to worry about getting one that's within a specific range. I have pretty much have them all. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this guy just before it actually goes into the high pressure fuel pump on the top of the engine bay. It's actually gonna have to go from a quick connect, which is on the end of the fuel line inside the truck into this content sensor. So then coming out of the content sensor, I'm gonna have to do another quick connect out to a hose. So it's gonna go like this, and then I'll use one of these lengths of hoses, just enough to be able to splice this together, then to another quick connect, and then that last quick connect is gonna go into the 3 8 prong or the 3 8 fuel line on the high pressure fuel pump. I know that's probably a little confusing, but once we get going, once I start assembling this right here, it'll make more sense. All right guys, and there we go. So I got my little adapter here, which is gonna go from the ethanol content sensor to the high pressure fuel pump. And let's go ahead and give it a tug. I'm gonna really pull on it hard as I can because you don't wanna have any chance of these popping out, which yeah, I'm pretty sure that they're not gonna go anywhere. One more thing we're actually gonna do before we make our way out to the vehicle. We'll go ahead and slide this gauge through the little gauge pod there. Just kind of generalize it, put it in a straight orientation. We'll finalize it later once we have it installed. Simply, you just push the wires through and there you go. Just like that. So we made our way outside guys and before we actually do the fuel related stuff, we're gonna go ahead and get the electrical stuff taken care of. This is the power harness coming from the gauge itself. This is what's gonna connect to the sensor and these are the other ones for various different things. We're really only gonna pay attention to the red, the black, and the white cords the brown and the yellow ones are for like if you have external data loggers or other things that would run off an input or an output that the gauge can give but once again we don't need that so i'm gonna tie those up out the way and tape them off for these other wires the white one is actually a dimmer wire so you can actually wire that to a headlight source and pretty much if the headlights turn on it'll dim the gauge but I'm not going to worry about that one either, so I'm actually going to tie that together with the ground wire. For the power wire, I actually have a little switch which goes to a fuse box, which I'm going to use so I can manually override to turn it on and off at my choosing. So, yeah, simply these two together, one to the power switch, one to ground, and we're good to go. There we go guys, we are all set and done. We got them nice spliced together with some strong solder splices. You guys may recognize this guy back from the Hacksent videos. I use this on pretty much all my electrical connections and this heat gun and solder splice combo really makes quick work, strong work of these connections. So let's move on into the truck. We're simply going to wire this up to that existing switch that I was talking about. And as you can see down here, this is the little switch that I made a while back, which I was originally gonna use for some external lights, but I changed my mind and did that with something else. So now I had this empty switch that's ready to go. So what I'm simply gonna do is I'm going to splice that ground wire into this ground wire right here, which is already down to one of the chassis bolts underneath the dash. I'm just gonna connect down here to this bottom one and this gauge should actually work. So in order to mount up this gauge, of course we're gonna fish the wires down through there and I'll open the door. We're gonna actually have to first up here, add this little plastic piece that comes with the gauge pod kit. That little plastic piece will actually slide down into this little groove here because this new gauge pod doesn't have clips. It actually has a screw hole. So pretty much with that little white piece there, it'll allow for this screw to screw through the gauge pod and attach to that clip there. All 
right guys there we go we got it wired up we got it installed we got it hooked up to the switch right now i have the switch off so in order to make it work we're gonna have to turn the ignition to the on position and i should be able to just flip this switch and the gate should turn on boom <laughs> and there we go we are good to go electrically so now that we're done with the electric part, now it's time for the fun part, the fueling part. It's actually just maybe one more electrical step. This is the cable harness that's actually gonna connect to the ethanol content sensor itself. So we have to fish this through the firewall. This side here, the small black side, is gonna connect to that gauge. And this large brown side is gonna connect to that. We're gonna have to figure out how to fish this through the firewall going from outside in. All right guys, so we got it through the firewall. Hopefully you guys can see. I'll try my best to fidget you down there. Sorry for the noise. That's the best thing I'm gonna get you guys. But just back there where the existing wire harness comes in, there's this little like nipple on top, a little rubber nipple, which I cut a little tip of it out. We'll go into the inside and hopefully you can see it better. Just like I said, you can see it a lot better. There was actually an existing hole just up above the top of that harness. Simply on the outside, I just cut a little slit with the razor and pushed the harness through. And now we're inside and we are good to go. So now that we're through the firewall, just go ahead and connect those two sides. So now it's time to move on to the fueling for real. So now for the fueling and the little adapter that I created. So this is the high pressure fuel pump right here. And this is the low side coming in, connecting to this black and blue quick connect. With the adapter I made, coming from the high pressure fuel pump, there's a 3 8 barb that you can connect with this side of the quick connect. Then it's gonna go through a little bit of hose right here in the middle. Then we have another quick connect on this side. That quick connect will actually connect to the ethanol content sensor itself. And then finally, the ethanol content sensor will then mate back up with the existing quick connect on the fuel line. That's the plan, but first things first, you gotta get rid of the pressure in the fuel system. So our first stop is actually gonna be up underneath the truck to disconnect a connector that stops the fuel from being pumped into the fuel system. Before you go down there, just make sure you clean up on the area, especially around the little low pressure side here. Clean it off with some shop rags, maybe a little bit of alcohol, and blow it down with a little air hose just to get as much dirt and dust from that area away as possible. All right guys, so we made our way up underneath the truck, and for frame of reference, over there, there's the exhaust, that's the passenger side of the truck. And I'm over on the driver's side, all the way at the back, right next to the spare tire. So your fuel pump control module, at least on a 2014, is actually just above the spare tire, right next onto the frame, the cross level of the frame. Hopefully you guys can see it. And this is the little pigtail here that you'll have to disconnect. Should be pretty simple. Just like that. Unplugged it, had to pull it just a little hard, but there it is so now with that disconnected we're going to go to the vehicle start it and let it run until it dies and one more time just as another frame of reference down here over on the driver's side of the vehicle just up on top you can see it back over there that's the little connector sticking up just go up underneath your truck go next to the spare tire it's over there so now that we have that disconnected go ahead and start the truck and it's going to pretty much run and idle for a bit then it's going to die There you go. All right, so now we're sure that the fuel pressure on the low side is out, but we're still gonna get a bunch of shop towels before we disconnect that quick connect over there. All right, now back into the engine. We're gonna try to disconnect this quick connect. You're gonna pull up on the little blue tab right there. It's gonna wanna spin on you, but pull up the tab, push on the other side, and push it down. Let's see, if you can grab it on this side, that'd be ideal. There you go. And there we go, got it. Get ready because there'll probably be a little bit of pressure in that line and we'll disconnect the low pressure side. Can't really see, I'm sorry, but there we go. So we're disconnecting now. Move this hose just up and out the way just a little bit. There we go, low pressure side is good to go. So now it's time to see if this is gonna fit right. We're gonna go ahead and connect one side here. Disconnect this side, immediately connect my quick connect. There we go. Now we'll come over here, connect this side to the existing fuel line. I think that's it. Yeah, we're connected and locked. Both sides are connected. They feel secure. And we're gonna connect this side right there. 
and there we go we got it done so there we go guys we are connected and now you can actually really see what my plan was from the high pressure fuel pump you got a quick connect needed a little bit of hose adapter in between the two quick connects here and the barbs into the ethanol content sensor and then back over there into the existing fuel line and it's a nice smooth curve I didn't want to actually do a right angle right here which I could have the only thing I noticed is the engine cover may or may not fit anymore but that's okay that's not a deal breaker nothing's gonna be affected by that we're gonna actually plug back in that fuel control pump module in the back plug in the ethanol gauge and not start the vehicle but just turn it to the on position until the fuel rail builds up pressure and we're gonna check for leaks. So it's gonna take more than one key cycle to build up pressure. Reminder, you're not starting the engine. You're just turning it to the on position a couple times and letting the fuel system build that pressure back up. So I'm actually gonna have my mom help me out on this one. She's gonna cycle the key ignition while I just keep an eye over here on all the connections and make sure there's no fuel leaks. So she cycled it a couple times already. I'm just gonna get a little bit up close and personal, kind of run my hand around the connections, see if I feel any liquid, which is fuel. So far, so good. After you do that a couple times, you should be okay to go ahead and start the vehicle. It may take a couple times to crank, but once again, just watch for fuel leaks and immediately turn it off if you see anything. All right, go ahead and turn it all the way on. So far so good, I'm just looking up close on it, hopefully you guys can hear me, if you can't I'm sorry, and it looks good, it looks great actually. Alright guys, so now for the moment of truth, first things first, as you can see, we got fuel line pressure, this is the low side, 69 psi, there was no leaks, I looked at it for a few minutes, so now if I flip this switch, we should start getting a reading on the gauge, and <laughs> we sure are. 20, 28.9, pretty much 29. So this is working excellent. What I put in the tank was an E30 mix. Of course, there's gonna be a very, very small variation, but that is extremely close and I am happy and satisfied. So guys, we are done. It's working, it's beautiful, and there's no fuel leaks, which is the main important part. Um, one thing that this innovative gauge also has in addition to the ethanol content, which is here in the center, is a fuel temp monitor, which is this green bar over here. You can actually configure that in the software that they provide you with the kit, but I just left it at the defaults. I think it was like from 40 something to 230 something degrees Fahrenheit. But once again, I'm not worried about the fuel temperature mainly just this in the middle and just like that guys we have now successfully installed a new mod on the eco beast we have a new sticker for the collection on the toolbox here this ethanol content sensor from innovative motorsports looks amazing works amazing and it just adds that peace of mind to the eco beast and the tune that we have for it so once again guys as always you don't want to miss anything we have coming up for the truck we have so much in store now that we got this guy in here so you make sure if this is your first time at the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button below, turn on your notifications, and be sure to stick around for what we have next. Thank you guys for watching Everything Averin. I'll see you on the next one.